Hey guys and welcome back to the channel. My name is Ari and hopefully you'll stick around for a quick video. Okay guys, so I'm kind of changing the location a little bit. In my little living room, this is where... If I'm not at work, you're most likely to find me. And I'm kind of covering up my recliner as best I can, but it's going to fall uh, with a throw because, well, I have worn this recliner out. This poor thing is literally falling apart, but it's comfortable. It's so comfortable. But I wanted to talk about the election because I haven't done a video in several weeks. And a lot of things have have changed. We now have a projected winner for the White House. And it is Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. It looks at this point that we have taken Donald Trump and turned him into a one-term presidency. Something that hasn't been done since George... Uh, Herbert Walker Bush in the 1980s, going into the 90s. I'm bad on my exact date on that, even though I do remember the presidency. But I wanted to talk about some things that have come up since that victory has been declared. And one of the biggest things that I'm hearing from a lot of Democrats and a lot of um, Republicans is that now is the time when we kind of have to stop gloating and we have to offer an olive branch to the Trump supporters, to the people who did not vote for our candidate. And I wanted to talk about that because while I know that sounds politically right, it sounds politically correct, it's a hard pill for many of us to swallow, myself included. You see, I'll admit, I've done a little gloating. I've done a little gloating online, probably do quite a bit more. But people need to understand where that gloating is coming from. You see, this is not a simple case of people wanting to say, we won and you lost not what this is about. What you're seeing bubble over onto social media, what you're seeing bubble over into the streets of our country is an expression of pain. It's the pain of four years, the hopelessness that so many of us felt because we felt targeted by this administration and its supporters. And I say that because it's not just an issue of Donald Trump. Yes, Donald Trump is going to be out of the White House. Joe Biden and Kamala Harris will be our next president and vice president. And their ticket received more votes than any presidential ticket in United States history. That is certainly a cause to celebrate. But, Donald Trump and Mike Pence received the second most votes of any, of any candidate in U.S. history. And that is after we have seen this administration rip children from their mother's arms and throw them into cages. We have children sitting right now in border towns behind locked cages that can't even remember what life was like before they were caged like wild animals thrown into a zoo. Even better in a zoo, at least you get some sense of roaming around free. We have seen an administration that has argued against trans rights. More than argue, they've put it into practice. They have set policies 
through health and human services that make it so that if trans people go to the hospital, someone, a medical professional, someone who took an oath to do no harm, can look at that person and basically say, I'm sorry, I don't treat your kind. And all they have to do is claim a religious objection. We've seen trans people banned from the United States military. We've been told you're not good enough to even defend a country that acts as if it doesn't want you in the first place. We've seen the people who have loyally served in our United States military, who we have already put through training, who we have spent massive amounts of money to make sure that they're trained because they came, they volunteered to do a patriotic duty for our country. But because they're trans, they're kicked out. And what's the argument? Well, we don't want to have to pay for their medical care. We shouldn't have to pay for a, quote, sex change operation, which is a term I don't use as a side note. But we shouldn't have to pay for that. Yet, the United States military pays millions upon millions of dollars for Viagra every year. So apparently, it's perfectly fine to make sure that they can get an erection, but it's a different story if you want to make sure that a trans person, a trans woman can't, you know, that, that, that's unacceptable. On top of that, we have the Supreme Court, which has been packed full. They talked about packing the Supreme Court, saying that's what Democrats' plans were. They've already beat us to it. They have packed that court with the most radical, right-wing, hate-filled bigots in this country. We have two Supreme Court justices who have just recently, within recent months, talked about marriage equality, saying that the marriage equality ruling allowed people of faith to be targeted, basically saying they want a do-over on marriage equality. They want to take away marriage rights. We've seen, as Black Lives Matter protests have gained the nation's attention, we've seen a president of the United States, rather than come to the defense of people of color who have police officers squeezing the life out of them with their knees on their neck, Rather than coming to their defense, we had a president who said that he was supporting proudly the men whose knees were on their neck. So, yes, it's going to be very hard for me to extend that olive branch. Because this olive tree, over the last four years, has been stripped bare. I don't have an olive branch to give because, to be honest with you, while I am absolutely thrilled that the election turned out as it did, that we won this, I'm angry. I'm angry as hell at the direction this nation has taken. I'm angry that children of color, that immigrant children, that LGBTQ children, that Muslim children have been told over the last four years, whether directly or indirectly, you don't matter. You matter less than other people. And yeah, I'm here to say bullshit. We matter. We are going to vote. We are going to continue to stay involved, but I cannot forget that so many of you voted for Donald Trump after you watched the hatred, the bigotry, the racism, the homophobia, the transphobia, the xenophobia, and you still said, not a deal breaker for me. You said that was acceptable. 
you allowed that to happen and you still cast your damn vote for that orange Hitler just a couple of days ago. So, you can have your change of heart. But right now, our communities, communities of color, sexual minorities, gender minorities, we need healing first. When we were in pain over the last four years, not because of losing an election. I wasn't in pain over losing an election. I was in pain because the United States president, his entire administration, our very government made us a target. But when we were in pain, when we were wounded, those Trump supporters didn't come to our side. They didn't aid us. They didn't say, I've got your back. They rubbed salt into the wound. They said, get over it, snowflake. They said, if you don't like it, get out. They said, he's still your president. So, don't expect me now to sit back and act like I'm okay. I'm pissed. Yes, we have to move forward. Yes, we have to heal. Yes, we need peace. But healing is a process. It's not a one-day event. It's not something that is simply solved because Joe Biden and Kamala Harris won this election. There is hard work ahead, not only on the epidemic that this country is facing, but also on the social injustices that this nation needs to make right for people of color, for LGBTQ people, for immigrant families, for the children sitting on our border, still to this day locked in a cage with no idea where their family, where their family is now. So, if you mean peace, as in no violence, I'm with you, 100%. If you mean peace, as in let's let bygones be bygones, let's pretend that the last four years didn't happen, let's pretend that our neighbors and our family and our friends didn't openly betray us, sorry. You can pick somebody else for that bullshit. I was born at night, but it wasn't last night. I'm not going to forget. Forgiveness will come. Somehow. But, I'll never forget. I know that we hear the religiosity that, you know, God forgives and forgets our our past sins and all that, and that may be true, all based on your religious views, but I'm not God. I need time. I need to see the improvements happening in this country, and there are many minority communities, and I don't pretend to speak for them, because I can never understand the experience of being a black man or a black woman in our nation. I have the privilege of being white in a racist society. I can't understand what they go through on that front. But I can empathize. I can hear their stories. I can compare it to my own stories of being a trans woman in this nation and have some understanding, some empathy for what they must be going through as well. For how hard it must be on them. The same with immigrant families. I can't know their experience, but I can listen. I can be willing to hear, and I can stand up for their voices. I won't speak for them, because they deserve their voice, just as trans people deserve our own voice. But if they need someone fighting beside them, if they need someone who will speak up and say it's time to change this disgusting, poisonous culture, 
I am with you. I will stand with you. We have made both myself and my husband our own oath that we will use whatever small platform we have to speak up for those that aren't being spoken up for, that aren't in the position to do so, that don't have the privileges that we have had, um, that I've had by nature of just being a white person in this country. But we will speak up for you. We will continue to fight for your rights and our rights and we will continue to fight that this country can turn out, that this country can become something that we can all be proud of. So, I'm going to close off and, and end the video. I, I just want to say, I'm not angry at you if you're one of the people that's talking about peace. If you're one of the people that's talking about not gloating. That's not the point of this video. But I want you to understand that because many of us can't do that, that many of us aren't ready to do that, it doesn't mean we're less than. We're experiencing pain. We're addressing our pain. We're hoping for healing. And through that healing, as we can find peace within ourselves, then maybe we'll be able to offer peace to others. But reconciliation is not just about a blanket forgiveness. It's about righting the wrongs. So, if you want us to have that inner peace, because I support the outer expressions of peace as in not being violent, but if you want us to truly have that peace, to be able to extend that olive branch, you've got to help us cultivate it. You've got to listen. You've got to be prepared to hear the hard realities that this election might have been your goal, but it wasn't ours. We wanted Joe and Kamala to be elected, but it doesn't fix everything. The hard work is still ahead. Black men and women are still dying in the streets at the hands of police. Children are still sitting in cages on the border. Trans people still fear for their lives. They still are being told, you're less than. So, the election was an important step, but it wasn't the finish line. We've got to continue fighting. And I hope that if you're one of those joyous Democratic supporters, that you'll take the time to understand that and see that pain just takes some time to heal. Lots of love to all of you. From both myself and my husband, Jeremy, we want you to know that we're, we're standing with you. We understand that this is a difficult time. We empathize with your pain, and we're never, ever going to give up. In the words of Kesha, don't let the bastards get you down. We're in for a rough couple of months before the transition, and honestly, a rough four years after that. But together, in unity, in solidarity... We'll make it through this. We will do the hard work to make America, to make the United States a better nation. A nation that respects you, that appreciates your rights, your freedoms, and your right to simply exist in this nation. We're going to do that work. It's a long haul, and thankfully... We're up for it. Lots of love to all of you. Goodbye and best wishes.